What happened at Brian Koberger's arraignment? How will his silent plea affect the trial? Will the families of the four victims brutally murdered finally get justice they so desperately seek? Suspected murderer Brian Koberger was arraigned Monday for the brutal killings of four University of Idaho students. Koberger appeared in court in an orange jumpsuit where he was expected to enter a plea, but instead chose to use Idaho's standing silent plea, which means he has not pleaded either way but can still be tried. This led the judge to enter a not guilty plea on his behalf, and he set a trial date for October 2nd. But what does Koberger's silence mean? Koberger's arraignment on Monday was the 28-year-old's first court appearance since being formally charged in January with the killings of best friends Madison Mogan and Kaylee Gonsalves, both 21, and young couple Zanna Kernodal and Ethan Chapin, who were both 20. Koberger sat silently as the judge read his rights and reiterated that he faces the death penalty if found guilty of any of the four first-degree murder charges. Koberger responded yes when asked if he understood. But then as the four murder charges and one burglary charge were read out by the judge, Koberger sat flicking through his indictment papers and shifting in his seat before his lawyers told the judge her client would be standing silent when asked to respond. You want our to be standing silent? Procedurally, uh, everything was in line with what he had the right to do. Uh, he could have took the st uh, stand in silence or plead not guilty or guilty. I, I, I think it was a surprise to everyone uh, that he didn't enter a plea, technically enter a plea by saying not guilty. Um, that being said, uh, every right to follow that process. Looking on were Madison's father, Ben Mogan, and Kaylee's parents, Steve and Christy, who looked serious as their daughter's names were heard in the packed courtroom. Kaylee and Madison were discovered dead in bed next to each other, while Ethan and Zanna were found on the floor below, with Zanna discovered slumped over on the floor of her bedroom. I'm ready. I'm ready for this to go on and lay out the case and let the community see what the evidence is. And then, you know, let, let the cards fly where they're going to go. You just can't hunt our babies. You just can't come to our state and hurt our people. It's just, it's unacceptable. We. We're a small state, but you're gonna see how strong we are. Maddie and Kaylee's parents accepted posthumous bachelor's degrees for their late daughters on May 14th. Mogan's parents fought back tears as they walked the stage to accept the degree from the University of Idaho. Certificates were provided for Zanna, who was a junior, and Ethan, who was a freshman. Koberger was originally due to face a preliminary hearing, but in a surprise twist, was announced last week that the Washington State University PhD candidate was indicted by an Idaho grand jury who heard the evidence in secret and decided to send the case to a full trial. The trial is expected to last six weeks when it kicks off in October. The November 13th killings shocked the tiny college town of Moscow, which had not seen a single murder for seven years when Madison, Kaylee, Ethan, and Zanna were found dead in their beds. Police initially appeared to be stumped by the murders and issued a series of contradictory statements over whether the students had been targeted and whether the public was at risk. But they eventually arrested Koberger during a raid on his parents' Pennsylvania home in the Pocono Mountains on December 30th, and he was flown back to Idaho in January. Since then, the alleged killer has been locked up at the county jail, with prison sources telling DailyMail.com he spends his time obsessing over the TV coverage of the case and has turned to God, meeting with a local pastor every Sunday. Jail officials say Koberger is a model prisoner, despite being taunted by other inmates who shout at him. He spends most of the time in a cell and is escorted by several correction officers wherever he goes. He leaves his cell around 7 p.m. each Sunday to meet with the pastor who leads him in prayer as he remains locked up without bail. For more on what happens next with Coburger, be sure to check back on DailyMail.com for updates.